Good day, guys. I'm going to show you something. Some of you all know this. Some of you won't. On a detector, on a pulse induction detector, what's going to give the biggest signal? Try again. That. Or that. It's a fair whack of gold there. <clears throat> so what we're doing, comparing, if we get the focus, probably a bit too close, but uh, that little speck, or this jar of gold. I put the detector on, and I say, I move the chair, get around that. I'll turn this right up so you'll be able to hear it. I'm using another uh, GPX 4500 and this one has some experimental um, upgrades on it at the moment I'm just running through and testing so so it's very very quiet for um, being inside the house at the moment so so we've got this tiny little target here on the end of that uh, bit of plastic So I'm running it in normal mode at the moment. Let's go across the windings. So we get it up about here. It's nearly to the uh, top of that plastic part. It's about five millimeters or so under. We'll say a centimeter under. Okay, so the next target, you get this um, vial of gold. Oh, the detector hardly hears it. You'd expect a massive signal from that, wouldn't you? If we go up to where I was getting that tiny little speck, about there, So out in the bush, <laughs> wherever you are, some old timers dropped these plastic, you know, I'm not going to say plastic for an old timer, but some detectresses dropped their plastic container full of fine gold or uh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and uh, it could be even in a little glass bottle, little glass vial. Um, the old timers usually put in metal tins old tobacco tins, so you'll find that. As long as you've not um, got any form of ELF and running discrimination, you'll probably ignore it. But, uh, yeah, I always thought that was amazing. I've never done a video on that before. So you get that much gold. And... Yeah, just walk over it. You wouldn't even know it's there. And you get something like that uh, little bit of uh, 0.2 by three millimeter um, piece of copper wire. There's a little off cut in there. Not a problem. So at the end of the day, that little tiny speck, <laughs> it gives a much clearer response than that uh, loose gold. And there is a reason for it. The gold-to-gold gold particles, 
they're not um, a hard contact and you will have a little bit of resistance and just the shape of it it because it's not one big solid lump it acts like each one of those little targets in there are all being energized but because they're all um, loosely coupled any signal regenerated from this uh, gold is it as it tries to um, um, you know do a return signal after it's been energized it burns off the energy on every other particle in there it's, it's uh, they're all touching each other and as you try and get the magnetic domains to um, wrap around and drop off and decay and let off a magnetic field it just doesn't do it it can't do it it's not got the um oomph to get anything meaningful um, to the detector now if you got that i'm going to try an experiment here i've never done this i don't even know if it'll work but what i'll do i'll i'm going to comp make make sure that doesn't look. i'm going to compress it I want to see if compressing it hard together generates a better so we'll go over it with uh, make sure it's not sticky I don't want gold sticking on it but I'm going to push it down hard makes no damn difference okay even under compression, it makes no difference. It just shows you that uh, that gold like that, no matter how much there was of it within reason, I mean it's going, it's going to give a signal, but it's not giving it much of a signal. You know, if it was that was here, you're not going to hear it at all. Uh, it's just interesting. You could probably have um, you know sacks and sacks of this stuff. Um, and uh, the pulse induction detector is not going to detect it. Which uh, wonder how much gold's been walked over when you think of it like that. But as soon as it's, uh, you know, you get gold and it's all put together as one big lump, like I'll just get a ring, like a ring like so. I mean, I'm I'm miles away from the not miles, but I'm fair fair distance from the uh, coil, but. <laughs> Yeah, funny how we say that, miles away. It's not really. Um, but just a ring like that, here, you can pick it up. And if we um, do an experiment like we did with that uh, vial of um, loose um, gold, I get way, way, way above the coil. So the other thing too, um, a target like a ring as such is going to give a far better response than even a nugget of the same size in a lot of cases. If a nugget is very, very jaggedy, um, sharp edges, uh, it's going to have a very, very greatly reduced uh, amount of signal to the detector. But something that is like a ring, it's very smooth, and even being um, that round, joined-up shape is going to give one hell of a signal. It's just the way the uh, energy transfers to this, and it's nearly optimum for regenerating that energy back out. It's going to give a huge signal. So you can get a nugget twice as big as this ring, and the ring will still be able to pick up at greater depth. It, it's very interesting, isn't it, how that works. But if your nugget is very, very smooth and not particularly like a ball of gold, but uh, smooth, like it's water-worn, it's going to give a far greater signal than a jagged nugget. So it's one thing to take into account. Even big gold, you, you should be using... Uh, um, uh, not a huge coil, but more of a smaller coil. Um, yeah, that's how sensitive that is. Um, 
you should be using more of a smaller coil to get down on hard to detect spurry sharp edged gold big coils are great for big nuggets um, with a lot of mass I you know talking in your ounce size pieces you usually aren't going to miss those type of uh, targets but uh, you know when you get um, into you know the, the grams area uh, you know as soon as you get you know if you've got really really jagged gold around a gram it's very very hard to detect even with a coil this size which is an 11 inch it's very difficult to detect when it's getting um, a bit of distance away from the coil so it's just something to keep in mind that uh, you really want to know what is in the area what sort of gold um, as an average in an area that you're detecting you, know, you don't go somewhere with jagged gold using a, a huge coil you know in an area with a lot of jagged small gold you know a 14 inch or 16 inch coil is is probably getting too big you know unless it's very close to the surface you're probably better off using something like a very small coil um, and I'm thinking along the lines of an 8 inch mono coil something small um, 6 inches yeah you can do it it's very hard to wind up for a pulse induction detector and keep it efficient um, but an 8 inch coil is probably optimum for you know that jagged type gold because you've got more of a concentrated field going down it's not as spread out <clears throat> and uh, yeah It'll, um, you'll probably get uh, better results. But on an area where there's, uh, you know, smooth nuggets where there's old river, river, river action, um, you know, anything like that where the gold's water-worn and it's more smooth, you know, even if it is small, you can get away with a bigger coil. So just keep that in mind if you're doing, you know, looking at gold around gold reefs. It's very jagged and gold around river systems or old river systems <clears throat> dear me <clears throat> need my morning coffee i haven't had it yet and uh you're probably better off you know using a larger coil uh, a little bit larger so it's horses for courses don't just um you know put on a coil willy-nilly and go out there and start swinging hoping to get something do a bit of research and find out what is in the area so you know always keep your uh, wits about you when you're looking for gold so you're not wasting your time anyway hope that's some sort of education catches